thing and so much of it is sort of daily tests and different kind of stress, different kind of load um, on the knee and basically seeing how the tissue responses. Um, that is just a very day by day thing. So I know that I won't be racing in Andorra this weekend. And that's basically as far out as we can be sure at this point. It looked like a really serious crash. I'm guessing your injury could have been much more serious. And there was certainly a moment when you were watching the broadcast where time just seemed to stand still. What was it like for you? And I mean, what goes through your mind when you know it's gone wrong and, and you're going to hit the fence? Before I actually fell, I kind of felt, um, I felt immediately that something was off with my knee. Um, kind of, it was sort of like immediate pain when I landed from the jump. I was actually trying to stop, but there's not really enough space in that section of the course to stop. So then I was also trying to avoid the gate, avoid hitting the gate. And the way it just happened was like, I hooked up and saw the fence coming and I have not really had many crashes where I actually hit the, hit the fencing, um, like at all, let alone that hard. So but I felt like I was seeing this happen a split second before it actually did. Just please, no, not the red room. <laughs> Oh God. You were so lucky, I guess. Um, I suppose this also gave you an opportunity to recuperate alongside Alex, which is not something you both would have expected at the start of the season. Yeah. What was that like? Who, who was looking after who more? Oh, well, um, I would say you know, emotionally and mentally, we look, at, we look after each other. Maybe evenly, I feel like he maybe looks after me a little bit more, uh, ironically. My crash was a lot, but he had a, a really extra dose of trauma um, and insanely high impact. His mental state is so incredible to me that he can be so positive about life, about the steps, step by step, like every single step in front of him. He's able to just kind of take it with an open mind. And this has been really, I mean, it's been really challenging for somebody who at our level, I mm. guess, of athletic competition and th at, to then be reduced to, you know, not really even being able to take a shower or cut food on your own or walk and you're in a wheelchair and you can't get anywhere in your own apartment, even though it's just one floor. It's, it's a lot of things that you just never think about. You know, you mentioned I'm lucky. I actually am very lucky. I could have had a lot more damage than I did. Um, he is a pretty tough reminder of that. So you guys have been reminded of just how dangerous this sport is. You're young, you're successful, you're happy, you're in love. You've got nothing to prove to anybody. <laughs> have you not found yourself discussing with each other? Maybe we just go off and do something else. <laughs> um, I'm not going to say that it hasn't come up. Um, but that's also even before our crashes. It always comes down to the fact that we both do love ski racing. We're passionate about it. There's a, a weight that the risk of crashing and having not just career or season ending injuries, but actually life altering injuries. That is a that is a very big weight to carry around. And especially when you've experienced it firsthand, I guess the perspective shifts a little bit. Um, and I'm not, I'm not going to say that. I mean, that's a very real thing for sure.